the only thing I know, the only thing that's certain on this program is uncertainty. I mean, I, I, I love a quip, I love a truism, but, but in this case, it's true. I'm trying to deliver while government's still making policy, while the sector is still evolving. I mean, I don't know whether you take bets at home about where freight's going to end up, whether it's going to be electric, when it's going to be hydrogen, whether it's going to be diesel, whether it's going to be some mix of all of that. I mean, to be honest, I could lend you my Trivial Pursuit set if that is the, con the conversation you're having around your dinner table, because to be honest, there's a better time to be had than, than those conversations. But, you know, it's the conversation that I have and, and, and I just don't know. And the reality is freight needs a huge amount more power than even my cars and small vans. And, and I'm trying to deliver a bunch of power in the context where I don't know what we're going to do about freight. Government are scratching their heads. The industry is scratching their heads. Consultancies represented around this room are scratching their heads. Everybody's got a pet answer. I, 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 don't, I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, other things. We've not really got the regulation, as I said earlier. I mean, I think OZEV have done a great job. And, and yeah, I am sponsored by OZEV, so I kind of... I kind of have to say that, but actually I really believe it. They've been doing some really great things to get this set up for the country. They have mandated 98% uptime. They have mandated open data standards so that we can get the information out of charge points that we're going to need if we're going to plan for this decarbonized transport network. So they're doing some really great work, um, but it's not finished. There's a brilliant accessibility standard. If you, if you, ever, if you ever want a happy half an hour, read the... Uh, accessibility standard that means that charge points are going to be inclusive for people who have mobility problems or reading problems. It's actually it's actually genuinely really good. Um, but loads and loads of stuff. So that was lesson two. Lesson three. Um, we're going to have to co collaborate till it hurts. We're going to have to collaborate all the way across a number of sectors who are not natural in marriages together. You know, so this means transport, we're going to have to cuddle up to our friends in power and then we're going to have to collaborate some more and then we're going to have to collaborate some more and then it's going to be, you know, pretty tough for both of us at times, but we're going to have to do that. This is really a paradigm shift in terms of the way we're fueling our vehicles. So we're going to need these new partnerships. We're going to need value chains that are set up um, and supply chains that are set up to... Um, really deliver over the next five years because the thing about government money is if you don't spend it in the right time it kind of goes away so yeah we, we, we've got to we've got to do things differently we also need to get better partnerships with vehicle manufacturers and um, I mentioned earlier you remember OZEV with that brilliant work on mandating open source data that's essentially um an enormous prize for all of us. Um, some of my colleagues are transport planners um, and are really excited about the possibilities that this data can bring in terms of uh, predicting uh, how people are going to travel on the network, what cars we've got on the network, how far they're traveling, what the age of their batteries are. Really, really exciting data. But we need vehicle manufacturers to start thinking about how they're going to provide that information in car to people so that people can be confident about when they set off, where they're going to charge, how much it's going to cost them, how long it's going to take, what else they can do when they're charging their vehicles. Mine's a cappuccino. We need vehicle manufacturers to step up into this space as well. We're also going to need app providers and um, Interchange have done a fantastic job of getting us in the same building as um, fantastic tech people. I mean, don't get me wrong, they've made us all stand in different rooms and so the presentations that I want to go to are all happening over there, but we're going to have to do that. And so my role becomes a little bit about provoking some of these industries to really step up and start to create the ecosystem that we're all going to need if we're going to uh, really transform uh, the, you know, the way we travel on the on the road network. So those are my three lessons. I mean, what's clear to me is that actually, you know, this is a really urgent problem, and and um, I'm super grateful for the BBC for pu publishing a brilliant article about air pollution yesterday. It was really good. If you haven't read it, the things. Honestly, just, just go away. It's a very short article, very readable, but it'll tell you how air pollution is affecting the quality of your life. 
um, it's terrifying. So we've got an urgent problem and we do need to act urgently and we need to behave differently and we need to create new partnerships and we need to regulate differently. And it is all out there within our grasp. I absolutely firmly believe that. But it is going to take all of us behaving a bit differently if we're going to get there. Look, I haven't got all the answers. I'm hoping you guys do. And, and I don't know what the future holds, but dear God, I'm excited to be part of it. Thank you so much. Thank you.